today, gotcha, more Big Bank BS. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one that is post covering finance and property news. Well, this week, the major bank CEOs were in front of Parliament and there were quite a few questions circling. <laughs> Clearly, some politicians have understood that banks are on the nose and they were pushing home some quite important discussions. But one that really stood out for me was from Daniel Monaro, who asked specifically about the way that NAB actually measures customer transactions. I think if one was to think about banks 50 years ago, people would think about somebody coming in, going to a counter, withdrawing cash, you know, walking out, or coming in and yes. depositing cash and walking out. But I'm just wondering, um, of the data you collect about branch activity, like th th obviously that kind of engagement has reduced, but what about people coming into the bank to um, talk to somebody at the bank to help them navigate the digital system? Like, I mean, how many interactions are there of a different nature? Um, and I, I imagine, you know, you probably record that, uh, all the different kinds of things people do when they come in. Some of that will be recorded and some of it won't, but I'll pass to Rachel because Rachel has the information, it's her network and she sees what's coming in and out every day. But yeah. maybe the, if you um, take... it's, a, it's a great question. And those those interactions that aren't um, don't result in a transaction, they're, they're actually very challenging to, to measure. Um, we don't measure them. Um, we don't measure them. Um, we don't measure them. Now, this is important because, of course, the banks have been arguing for a long, long time and also Anna Bly at the Bankers Association that the transaction throughput has been dropping through the floor. One reason why they want to close branches, particularly in regional areas. But it was very interesting to hear that NAB doesn't measure a lot of the interactions that happen within branches. So they are being very flexible with the truth at a minimum or probably using statistics to justify their position when those statistics are dead wrong. And interestingly, in my own research, which I presented in previous shows, I have a very different picture where a lot of people go into branches, for example, to deal with scam issues or to change information or to make other transactions that are not actually pushing money in or taking money out of the system. And the fact is that NAB doesn't measure that. So what they're actually saying is that their representation of activity in the branch network is very different from reality. Now, this is a very important point because, of course, the Senate inquiry is currently running into branch closures. And this is one that was precipitated by the work that Dale Webster and myself and a few others as well, of course, including the Citizens Party, all pushed to be able to get this inquiry running. And it's really casting a spotlight on what's been going on to the point where Westpac pedaled back some branch closures and CBA announced recently that they would freeze branch closures in regional areas for three years. Although, of course, weasel words, they're very specific about regional versus metropolitan and they exclude Bank West branches. But the point I want to make today is that whilst some banks are listening and reacting, NAB, for example, continues to shut branches at a horrendous rate and are using dumb statistics to do it. So Dale and I have now written to the Senate inquiry to ask them specifically to audit the statistical information that has been provided by the banks to justify their strategy. And this is what we wrote. Dear members of the Senate Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Reference Committee, in light of the serious disclosure in Parliament this week that the National Australia Bank 
has been misrepresenting data on branch visitation, we ask that statistics given in evidence by all banks and the Australian Banking Association to this inquiry be fully audited to determine their integrity before being taken into consideration in your final deliberations. In both verbal evidence and documents tabled at the sale hearing in March this year, the National Australia Bank told you that decisions for closing branches were made based on declining visitation. But Parliament and the Australian public learned this week they have absolutely no proof to back up those claims. Under excellent questioning by Daniel Milano, during the House of Representatives Economic Committee's review of the four major banks, the following words came out when asked if NAB captures customer interactions that do not result in a transaction. We do not measure them. This raises serious questions about whether claims by all banks that foot traffic is dropping can be verified. As this is the information banks provide to the Australian Bank Association to be used by Anna Bly when talking about the reasons for bank closures in regional Australia, her claims must also be scrutinised for accuracy. The type of branch visitation that is not being captured by NAB goes to the heart of the welfare and economic issues your inquiry has been set up to examine. It is the general business of banking that can't be done online or through a post office. The type of banking people choose to do to avoid making themselves vulnerable to scams and the conversations that underpin the economic growth and prosperity of a regional community. NAB has misrepresented branch visitation at 40 regional locations it has decided to close since September last year in branch closure impact assessments, which are now a legal requirement under the Banking Code of Practice. It has done this by quoting figures for visitation without revealing that the figures only represent withdrawals and deposits. One of these documents for the closure of MAFRA in Victoria was tabled as evidence at the sale hearing. The real story of what is happening in these communities is to be found in the submissions your inquiry and the regional banking task force received. Failure to recognise general business visitations at branches is the reason bank claims are not correlating with the lived experience of people on the coalface of regional bank closures. We ask that you please listen to the people not the propaganda. We'll be interested to see what happens with that request. Of course, Dale and I initiated the inquiry in the first place. And you can see that if you look on the Senate inquiry website, because our submissions are right at the top. And of course, more submissions are followed because this is a really important issue. So the bottom line is this. Branch closures across Australia are being justified on duff statistics and for agendas that are more to do with profit than customer service, which is why this inquiry is so important and which is why an alternative solution for banking in the regional areas is required if the majors continue to do what they're doing. As I've said several times before, and I'll underscore again, the problem with branch closures in regional areas is it sucks out economic activity. It makes it much more difficult for people to do their banking, particularly in regional areas where digital banking hardly exists. And yet this top-down strategy is being imposed by the CEOs and boards of these major banks thanks to their wish to provide additional value to shareholders without jurist thought about the impact on customers. So the BS continues. But now it's on the parliamentary record that the statistical data, at least by NAB, is not accurate. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.